Now I'm going to go back and repeat this again. You need to try to remove as many barriers as you can from the way you talk to yourself and the way you talk to your audience. If you believe in something, while it may be understandable that presenting to your message to people you've never met before in your life is a challenge that could be scary because you don't know how they're going to react to your message, you have to consider this also. Why did you think it was worth conveying to an audience in the first place? Did you not think that people would believe in it as much as you believe in it? If you didn't, what was your motivation for making the video in the first place? If you believe that people will find it, find it as interesting as you do, then you need to start allowing yourself to analyze yourself in the sense that what felt comfortable to you more than likely will feel comfortable to your potential audience if that audience you're after thinks the way you do, which is, I think, what most people who make a movie or a video or write a blog or comment on newspaper sites on the interset, inter, interset, internet, I believe they are assuming that there's people out there that think the way they do, so they tend to, on different levels of success, present their product as if they were presenting it the way they would like to see it. So what I emphasize is that you don't overlook the value of your own train of thought when you're developing a video, especially a video. Now you can apply this to written word communication as well. Whether you're writing a blog or commenting on an article in a newspaper or writing a letter to someone. Believe it or not, people still do write letters. Uh, on a side note, my wife is very dedicated to sending notes and cards and written responses to everyone who she interacts with in a positive way. And the feedback she gets from them is remarkably personalized, even to people she only met once or twice, and remarkably in-depth as far as feelings and emotion goes. So there's, uh, it would be wrong at uh, this point in our technological development to say, oh, the written word doesn't matter anymore. I mean, as in physically written with hand on paper, it still does matter and it still is extremely powerful. But back to this video thing. If you've ever watched a video that um, your, own, your first uh, exposure to it was the topic or subject matter, and you thought to yourself, wow, this is a subject I'm really interested in. I really would like to see this. And you get the opportunity to watch it. And as it unfolds, very quickly you realize to yourself the way this material is being, pre being presented, even though it's interesting and appealing to me, is driving me away rather than attracting me. And if you think back on what we've talked about so far, see if it doesn't apply that the very simple reason that the presentation of material you're actually interested in is not believable is causing one of two things to happen. Early on in the viewing of the video, you realize this is going to be a disappointing experience and one of two things happens. You either just stop there and cut your losses or you continue to watch the video all the way through to the end only to realize after it's over it was a waste of your time 
because even though the information was something you were interested in, it was not presented in a believable fashion, so you were actually worse off for the experience than enriched by the experience. When you think of something to yourself, do you think of it finished and then try to develop the details that will lead to the finished product? Or do you think of it in the steps that lead to a finished product? It's more than likely one or the other. I tend to have both situations happen with me. Sometimes I will have a, the sense of an ending and the message and feeling I want that ending to convey, but I'm not quite sure of the best way to build up to that ending. Other times, the entire message reveals itself to me as far as not only what the final message will be, but the steps that lead to it kind of come as a package. In both cases, I've learned not to overthink the simplicity of those two uh, alternative realizations. It's very possible that a simple, pure, and magnificent idea can be destroyed by overthinking it and trying to present it in ways you think other people would present it as opposed to the way you would present it the way you do when you think to yourself. So I wonder if there will ever be a day, you know, technology has advanced in the last 10 years a remarkable amount. Even if you don't uh, make it a habit of what's the latest, what came out today, what came out this week, what came out this month, literally technology is changing so fast these days that almost a day or week doesn't go by where something miraculous isn't discovered by somebody somewhere. While I don't pursue as in far, I mean, I don't uh, uh, have the need to own everything new that comes out and just my personal uh, personality doesn't need it. But I do follow it and, because I want to know what's out there. And I wonder sometimes if someday we won't be able to, you know, hold a disc up to our heads or plug something in and actually put down on some format uh, our thoughts, the way we see them and hear them in our own head, and if we do, what will that do for the art of communication as far as eliminating the errors people make with starting out with a pure, clean thought and just hacking the heck out of it in an attempt to get it on a format of some form of media that people other than themselves can watch and get the message from.